Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Hearthstone 4, Kai's Breaking New England. Let's continue on from where we last left off. So, gonna get another person of influence. Compliance gain, civilian war support. I mean, war support's terrible right now. License per shit. Railway construction plus 25%, that could be useful, but, you know, we're, we're, we're okay right now. I will go for just 5% stability, 5% war support. I mean, it's not, it's not fancy, you know? Not gonna it's not gonna make anybody get out of the uh, bed in the morning, but it's okay. It's a, it's a solid little investment. Aside from that, so right now we're getting our uh, work progress. You're basically terrible. Fifteen division, seventy-five. Well, I mean, we're close to you. Declaration of Independence. Of course, we do want. We can We do want the um, Quentin Roosevelt to actually collapse. Him collapsing will mean that I can actually take up the mantle of being uh, democratic America. So we do need 40% uh, legitimacy, which actually we're not far away from. We get a lot of claims. 20% war support will uh, give us a pretty nice boost. And then any of you, work progress administration. Yeah, but once you're done, we get a lot of this stuff done. Of course, I don't have a lot of uh, political power to try to deal with the, the harshness. Of, uh, of the Great Depression, but that's okay. I mean, the CSA, I will say, is a little bit scary. Do you guys do I South yet? You have. You have crippling strikes at the moment, which is what the CSA does to the Canadians to delay their intervention. But I don't think, I can't join a war yet. Because we have reluctant populace which will go away at some point, but they don't want to go to war. Which, you know, understandable, I guess. You know, you know, you go, went to New England to avoid this whole war. Why would you just immediately jump into it? Once you're done, you also get 65 political power. And you, we can definitely utilize that. So you're done. Uh, we will then go for propaganda campaign. And let's, what, what can we get here? Three air base garbage, infrastructure, eh. Railway? Not bad, not bad. Civilian factory, I will take. We can't do more. Do I have no civilian factories? No. Ba basically, no. So the consumer goods are terrible. And we can't even get the part of early mobilization because we have no war support. And we're not at war. So, yeah, it's really not good, is it? You at least, I mean, you're one civilian factory. You're also five factory. That's, that's actually quite a bit. Uh, so we got our research done. Let us go next for the M1 Garand, I think, also it's a little bit too expensive because it is uh, a year ahead of time. Do we have anything from 38? Any, any good 38s we, uh, we have? Artillery? 39 artillery tanks, eh, no. Yeah, I mean, actually, I'm not looking at any good options, so we will go for the 39 industry deck. War referendum killed in the house. It is revealed to the public the administration leaders in New England Congress received a surprise when a new possible war referendum was brought up to debate. The bill proposes that a national referendum should be held for Congress to declare war, thus giving the ordinary men and women a chance to direct the vote and the country's involvement in foreign conflicts. However, in the case where the nation is attacked first, the referendum would not be held. The controversial bill would secure the 23 votes needed to bring the bill into the House. Many Irish American delegates are eager to support the bill, believing that this will give New England the ability to stay away from aiding the former British Empire. These delegates and the people they represent are weary of the British, uh, with the memories of the Great Famine and the War of the Independence still fresh in their minds. Nonetheless, to the decision of 35 Congress members in the balance, Congressman James Farley rallied his fellow Irish American congressmen to shut down the bill. For I believe that America's place in the world is to help it and not stay away from the world's affairs. If efforts have been successful, the Possible War Referendum Act has been shut down. Interestingly enough, a parliamentarian question was raised late tonight by discovery that the list of signers bore the name of William P. Connery Jr., representative from Massachusetts, who had died by the time the petition was being presented. The rule requires that a discharge petition be signed by a majority of the members of the House. But the law says nothing about the signature of a dead member. The question remains for how uh question remains for now unanswered. I will take the political power. I'm okay with that. More than do I actually have no factories now? 
No, I have no free factories. That's nice. Um, very cool. Very, very happy to see it. Your expert focus volunteer only. I would like to get to the limited conscription if we could, but I'm assuming that's also going to take war support that I do not have. Yeah, Russia declared war on Central Asia. I'm not going to worry about too much about that. Air stability, war support, we're up to 16% now. Means we could get to early mobilization. Give me a few more factories. It's also way faster construction speed. Not increase our legitimacy. No, we're still at 35 now. You get an extra 5 up to 40, which is what we need to declare ourselves to be a legitimate government. We also have lost a factory. That's nice. Yes, I'm very happy with that. So you are political power gain. More factories, consumer goods that I can't even use. Yeah, please reduce the uh, reduce the Great Depression. That's in very, very vital. And I think we will then go for um, remobilization when we can. Um, it shouldn't take too long. It'll be like three days from now. Uh, we can get that going. Once that's done, we should hopefully have more factories that we can utilize to do our projects. We're up to early mobilization. We have now two factories to be done on... You don't have your bonus anymore. You're like, you're still like three months away, huh? And now that I did that, I, I went over to partial mobilization. We actually cannot do any more of you because we don't have any uh, political power, but that's okay. I mean, I should have seen that coming, to be, to be quite honest with you. Did we do anything with you? Get a safe house in New Jersey. I'm not really too sure what you actually do. How many infantry equipment do I have? I will try it in Ohio. But I don't know what it does. One infrastructure will be done in 35 days. I'll take it. And to think I saw on Mulberry Street. A new book may soon be in the hands of New Englander school children. Most publication has been indeed troubled, rejected by nearly 20 publishers, and to think that I saw on Mulberry Street was finally published at Vanguard Press. The book is a rhythmic children's story featuring a child's fanciful uh, imagination while strolling through Mulberry Street, perhaps inspired by the actual Mulberry Street in Springfield, Massachusetts. While colorful and expressive illustrations dot each page. Running under the moniker of Dr. Seuss. Oh, I wonder if you'll, uh, if you'll catch on. The author is Theodore Gizel, a 33-year-old New Englander of German descent with nearly 10 years of writing and illustrating experience. Gizel attended Dartmouth College, where he rose to be editor-in-chief of the humorous magazine Dartmouth O'Jacko Lantern. Gizel continued his education by uh, attending Oxford University in the Union of Britain to achieve his PhD in English literature, where he met his future wife, Helen Palmer, leaving Oxford in 1927 without finishing his degree. Gizel began to submit drawings and illustrations of making a living, achieving breakthrough success in a commercial piece for... For Filt? A bug spray in 1936. In 1936, after returning from a European voyage, Gizel felt inspired by the rhythmic sounds of the ship's engines while encouraging him to develop the rhyming scheme that would make up his latest book. Fleeing New York City as one of many American refugees, Gizel has returned home to his native New England in hopes of escalating or from escaping the tragic plight shared by many in the former United States. According to Gizel, the uh, frustration uh, being consistently rejected led him to nearly burn his manuscript on Mulberry Street until he ran into an old Dartmouth classmate. The chance the counter gave way to a eventual publication at the hands of the Vanguard Press. And although sales are modest, their views have been quite favorable. Big, big thumbs up for, uh... For, for this Dr. Seuss. Whoever he may be. I'm just gonna set up a second his safe house as well. Two safe houses for the price of two. We could, we could make more units. I mean, I would like to make more units for sure. How many guns are you actually making right now? Seven a day. You're eating combat with your ten. Again, I kind of just want bodies on the field. Even if they're kind of garbage, I, I still think it's okay. Hopkins under fire! From a sick bed of the North County Communal Hospital, uh, where he is recuperating from a throat infection, Secretary of Commerce Harry L. Hopkins is finally, is again answered definitely no to allegations that he belongs to the Socialist Party of America. 
In the days following Hopkins' implementation of the Work Progress Administration Relief Programs, Hopkins will come under fire from elements within Congress, with some announcing him as a cynicalist in skies and sheep's clothing. In a speech to the House, Democratic Representative John J. Connor from New York State declared that the head of one of our great departments is a registered socialist. When Connor was asked whether or not he referred to Hopkins, Connor shrugged his shoulders and replied, one must draw their own conclusions. While Hopkins and his son have re reiterated orally that Hopkins does not belong to the Socialist Party, this particular incident has illustrated the paranoia among Congress members regarding the so-called Red Menace. Those who are fiscally conservative are aware of the increasing role of the government in the economy and have come to see socialism as the nation's greatest enemy, both politically and morally. Even in the workplace, there are reports that those suspected of having leftist leanings beliefs or those speaking favorably of Reed's movement in Chicago are being fired or discredited. Throughout New England, many in private are referred to this massive scenario as a red scare, and some even jokingly remark that it is better to be dead than red. Okay, we lose one stability, but that's not so okay. A 1% stability loss is not that bad. By the way, how long until uh, you are deceased? I'm assuming not long. You're 45%. It's a little bit hard to say. New England. We would need Canadian backing. Who do you use actually see as the rightful government? I actually don't know. The looming war. You might not have chosen somebody to back. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Okay. Observation core. You're kind of garbage. You're pretty good. I'm gonna take you. Okay, can you cost command power? And security. Let's scale alternative alternative routes. I'm assuming that we have failed in New Jersey, unfortunately. Very sad to hear that, but what can you what can you do? Yeah, so we're gonna ignore you for now and probably forever. Air bases are Garbage. That's so bad. So right now, Great Depression. It's it's still not good. Apparently, taking these will um will help us in the long run. In nine days until both these are done. It's gonna give us seven civilian factories for free. Not for free, but we're gonna get some civilian factories back. One infrastructure is okay. Any more fa- uh, this free f ability slots, hot garbage. I would love to get- we can't do you actually yet. Bear Brook Camp has been built in New Hampshire, which is you. Okay, well I'll do that then. And then, I mean, if, I mean it's, it's okay. I'm gonna build the railroad next. Again, we are spending a lot of our factories on these special projects, but I do think it's worthwhile in the end. Excavation 2, eh, I'm going to say no to you for now. That one, Garens. Go for go for you. I mean, I, I know it's like a year ahead of time, but I don't really see that many good research opportunities right now. And historic bridge collapses across Niagara Falls. Thousands of onlookers gathered to the gate. <laughs> gathered together to watch the final collapse of the Honeymoon Bridge today. Large gusts of wind coming from Lake Erie sent a massive amount of ice pouring over the falls. Nearly 100 feet of ice came crashing down on the bridge's uh, Abington to ultimately com compromising the structure. Not even a 24 foot uh, tall fortification that in 1899 after the ice bridge threatened to push the bridge over could prevent the collapse. Luckily the cold temperature deferred most visitors to the falls and thus no one was injured. Northeastern states are currently experiencing one of the harshest uh, cold waves of winter. Sub-zero winds, uh, followed by a harsh blizzard, have swept southwards from Canada, bringing New England to a two-year record of frigid weather. In some parts of the country, therm therm uh, thermometers are reading 24 degrees below zero. For New Englanders, the cold weather and the snow blankets are a sign of trouble and undershirt times as the Civil War rages on across the country. So yeah, thank you just for giving me a little bit of damage. I'm, I'm happy with that, you know. No, no, I'm, I'm very happy. What I wanted to see was infrastructure damage. At least that will repair automatically. It's only going to last like five days, but it's still annoying. 
Just give me the cheap ones. Just give me whatever the cheapest political power cost-wise is, and we'll just call it a day there. I'm even gonna go for construction uh, three. Yeah, just boom. All 1939 uh, industry techs, boom, 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 get them all done. And modify it, so you're done in a few days. Again, two civilian factories is really nice. 75 political power. Can't do early personalization because you require 25% war support, but you do not have. I mean, 16, you know what? 16 seals pretty good. Yeah, we have. Ah, we don't need it right now. There's a stuff down here. I actually two military factories. Apparently, I didn't even realize that these were open. Two military factories. Actually, that that's definitely what we want next. Formation of the National Ski Patrol. Experience of ski tragedies shook the, uh, the world view of amateur skier and insurance agent Charles Minabdol in 1936 that would lead him to spearhead a national organization dedicated to ski safety and rescue. On a ski trip to Stoy, Vermont, Dole fractured his ankle and he had no one to save him but his friend Frank Edison, who just happened to pass by. Two months later, Edison went on his own ski race and fractured his ribs and arms while also suffering from a lung collapse. Severe injuries led to Edison's unfortunate death and would have lasting impression on Dole. The president of the National Ski Association, Roger Langley, asked Dole to be chair, uh, to chair a ski action study at the, for the NSA instead of patrols so the 1938 National Downhill and Salem Races. Since so this little project convinced Langley to ask Dole for, to charter a provisional patrol on a national basis throughout the United States. Dole took heavy inspiration from the president? President? I don't know. A Swiss patrol in Davos, Switzerland, formed, uh, forming his own ski patrol. However, unlike the Swiss Patrol, members of the American Patrol did not charge uh, for rescue or care. His National Ski Patrol is centered around the model service and safety. Patrollers mandated to take extended courses to fill those requirements and standards for efficient and effective patrollers. Since the organization is entirely voluntary, Dole created an awards program based on local and national levels. The awardship program covers various commendable skills and achievements such as leadership, first aid, skiing, mountaineering, and avalanche training. Well, that's good. You know, you don't want anybody to... Uh, end up dead here. Also, what are these, um... Oh, th th that's just for these, uh... Spy missions. And apparently we got discovered. Very cool. Very cool. We can modernize you. Yeah, give me give me the rail upgrades. Trains are pretty good. Also, yeah, give me the two military factories. And the way... The Work Progress Administration under Hopkins. You... 1% stability. Okay, that's basically just gets us back from the... Uh, loss we took due to the Red Scare. In response to the continued economic woes from the Great Depression, Secretary of Commerce Harry L. Hopkins had announced an additional wage increase for workers in the WPA. Uh, uh, agreements for workers in rural areas of Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. The program now sets a new wage at $3.90 a month to more than 82,000 workers. In rural areas of New England, Hopkins argued that the wage earners uh, there are only 40 are only 45% of the national average. With the new increase, they'll be getting 53% of that average. Let's get the impression that comparative underpayment of the north of, of the WAP. Uh, nevertheless, opposing congressmen who oppose the government in, uh, intervention in the economy find Hopkins' legislation too radical. Criticals find themselves uncertain as to whether or not Hopkins' wage increase will actually benefit the rural farmer, but since the WPA wages can be determined by a single person. To quell doubt among the working class of politicians, Hopkins has helped organize a community mobilization for human needs, an organization dedicated to sharing the cost of relief between local, state, and federal governments. Again, if I'm reading things a little bit messed up, it's because it's actually like 3 a.m. my time when I'm recording this. So, like 3 a.m. prior to when this will be going live. So, you know, here we are. Could get you. You are... Inf ah, screw it. Do it. Get it done. On it. We go to... Wait. Let's focus... Oh, you're a unique thing. Huh. Huh. Well, it's too late. I've already taken a different option here. But I do think at least right now, it's going to be a good time for us to end this episode. Thanks for watching, my saints. If you enjoyed, my thumbs up. Not to be close, thumbs down. If you want to see more, subscribe, and goodbye.